Hi, this is Brad Constantine, and you've reached the Book of Mormon Lecture Series. I've been teaching seminary and institute for the last 11 years, and uh, this is an attempt to do a deep dive into the Book of Mormon itself. I'm hoping that you'll find this uplifting and edifying. This is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, but every attempt has been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. So if you're ready for a deep dive into the Book of Mormon, here we go. Hi, and welcome back to the Book of Mormon podcast. This discussion will be Mosiah chapter 24. So let's just get into it. Verse 1, And it came to pass that Amulon did gain favor in the eyes of the king of the Lamanites. Therefore the king of the Lamanites granted unto him and his brethren that they should be appointed teachers over his people, yea, even over the people who were in the land of Shemlon, and in the land of Shilom, and in the land of Amulon. For the Lamanites had taken possession of all these lands. Therefore the king of the Lamanites had appointed kings over all these lands. And now the name of the king of the Lamanites was Laman, being called after the name of his father, and therefore he was called King Laman, and he was king over a numerous people. And he appointed teachers of the brethren of Amulon in every land which was possessed by his people. And thus the language or culture of Nephi began to be taught among all the people of the Lamanites. The mixing of the races, this, they learned the language for business purposes. The teaching of the language of Nephi prepares the people for the time when Ammon and, and the other sons of Mosiah preached to the Lamanites. Uh, don't you just hate it when you see bad guys that uh, have authority over good people? Not that that would ever happen in our day. Verse 5, And they were a people friendly one with another. Nevertheless, they knew not God, neither did the brethren of Amulon teach them anything concerning the Lord their God, neither the law of Moses, nor did they teach them the words of Abinadi. But they taught them that they should keep their record, and that they might write one to another. And thus the Lamanites began to increase in riches, and began to trade one with another, and wax great. Their business made them prosper. The fact that they learned the language of the Nephites helped them in business and began to be a cunning and a wise people to the, as to the wisdom of the world, yea, a very cunning people, delighting in all manner of wickedness and plunder, except it were among their own brethren. And now it came to pass that Amulon began to exercise authority over Alma and his brethren, and began to persecute him, and cause that his children should persecute their children. Amulon was one of the priests of Noah, remember, as was Alma, and now Amulon is persecuting Alma for what he said and did against King Noah. Verse 9, for Amulon knew Alma that he had been one of the king's priests and that it, had, it was he that believed the words of Abinadi and was driven out before the king and therefore he was wroth with him for he was subject to King Laman yet he exercised authority over them and put tasks upon them and put taskmasters over them. And it came to pass that so great were their afflictions that they began to cry mightily to God and Amulon commanded them that they should stop their cries and he put guards over them to watch them that whosoever should be found calling upon God should be put to death. Amulon knew that prayer works, that's why he's commanding them to stop praying. And Alma and his people did not raise their voices to the Lord their God. They must have had communal prayers, which are now prohibited, but did pour out their hearts to him, and he did know the thoughts of their hearts. And it came to pass, so this is a long time that passes, that the voice of the Lord came to them in their affliction, saying, Lift up your heads and be of good comfort. For I know of the covenant which ye have made unto me, and I will covenant with my people and deliver them out of bondage. And I will also ease the burdens which are put upon your shoulders, that even you cannot feel them upon your backs, even while you are in bondage. And this will I do, that ye may stand as witnesses for me hereafter, and that ye may know of a surety that I, the Lord God, do visit my people in their afflictions. John Taylor said, I do not desire trials, I do not desire affliction. I used to think if I were the Lord, I would not suffer people to be tried as they are. But I have changed my mind on that subject. Now I think I would if I were the Lord, because it purges out the meanness and corruption that stick around the saints like flies around molasses. I have seen men tempted so sorely that finally they would say, I'll be damned if I'll stand it any longer. Well, you will be damned if you do not. We have learned many things through suffering. We call it suffering. I call it a school of experience. Joseph Smith said, From Liberty Jail in a time of anguish and deep suffering for the gospel's sake, the prophet wrote the following message to the saints. Dear brethren, do not think that our hearts faint as though some strange thing had happened unto us, for we have seen and been assured of all these things beforehand, and have an assurance of a better hope than that of our persecutors. Therefore God hath made broad our shoulders for the burden. We glory in our tribulation because we know that God is with us, that he is our friend, and that he will save our souls. President Monson said, Remember that this work is not yours and mine alone. It is the Lord's work. And when we are on the Lord's errand, we are entitled to the Lord's help. Remember that the Lord will shape the back to bear the burden placed upon it. 
George Q. Cannon said, my theory is that when a man is conscious or a people are conscious, that he or they are in the path of duty, doing that which is right in the sight of God, they should be always happy, no matter what the circumstances may be that surround them. I think that God has created us to be happy, and my belief is that he placed happiness within the reach of us all, and it is a man's own fault if he is not happy and does not enjoy himself every day of his life. This is one of my reasons for liking my religion, because it bestows full happiness and joy upon its believers. They can be happy in the midst of the most adverse circumstances. They can rejoice when their lives are imperiled. Verse 15, And now it came to pass that the burdens which were laid upon Alma and his brethren were made light, yea, the Lord did strengthen them, that they could bear up their burdens with ease. The Lord was strengthening the people so that when they fled to Zarahemla over a twelve-day period, they would have the strength to do so. And they did submit cheerfully and with patience to all the will of the Lord. The test a loving God has set before us is not to see if we can endure difficulty, it is to see if we can endure it well. We pass the test by showing that, he, that we remembered him and the commandments he gave us. And to endure well is to keep those commandments, whatever the opposition, whatever the temptation, and whatever the tumult around us. We have that clear understanding because the, rest, the restored gospel makes the plan of happiness so plain. And that was by President Eyring. Elder Maxwell said, Concerning his personal suffering, Joseph was promised that thy heart shall be enlarged. And enlarged, Joseph wrote the Liberty Jail. It seems to me that my heart will always be more tender after this than ever it was before. I think I never could have felt as I do now if I had not suffered. If we, if we are serious about our discipleship, Jesus will eventually request each of us to do those very things which are most difficult for us to do. Sometimes the best people have the worst experiences because they are the most ready for them, or the most ready to learn. That was by Elder Maxwell. The submission of one's will is really the only uniquely personal thing we have to place on God's altar. The many other things we, we really we give, brothers and sisters, are actually the things we, he already has given us or loaned to us. However, when you and I finally submit ourselves by letting our individual wills be swallowed up in God's will, then we are really giving something to him. It is the only possession which is truly ours to give. That was again Elder Maxwell. Verse 16, And it came to pass that so great was their faith and their patience that the voice of the Lord came unto them again, saying, Be of good comfort, for on the morrow I will deliver you out of bondage. And he said unto Alma, Thou shalt go before this people, and I will go with thee and deliver this people out of bondage. Christ is the one to deliver them out of bondage by a miracle. Now it came to pass that Alma and his people in the night time gathered their flocks together, and also of their grain, yea, even all the night time were they gathering their flocks together. They exercised faith before the miracle happened. And in the morning the Lord caused a deep sleep to come upon the Lamanites, yea, and all their taskmasters were in a profound sleep. Instead of, uh, instead of using wine, the Lord caused the guards to sleep during the escape. And Alma and his people departed into the wilderness, and when they had traveled all day, they pitched their tents in a valley, and they called the valley Alma, because he led their way in the wilderness. Yea, and in the valley of Alma they poured out their thanks to God, because he had been merciful unto them, and eased their burdens, and had delivered them out of bondage. For they were in bondage, and none could deliver them, except it were the Lord their God. And they gave thanks to God, yea, all their men and all their women and all their children that could speak, lifted up their voices in the praises of, of their God. Now they're praying vocally again. And now the Lord said unto Alma, Haste thee, and get thee out, and get thou and this people out of this land, for the Lamanites have awakened and do pursue thee. Therefore get thee out of this land, and I will stop the Lamanites in this valley, that they come no further in pursuit of this people. Somehow the Lord would stop the Lamanites in their pursuit. Maybe the Lord poisoned their food, or gave them diarrhea, or caused snakes to happen, or whatever. Verse 24, And it came to pass that they departed out of the valley and took their journey into the wilderness. No one in this group has been to Zarahemla before. So they were led by the Lord. With Limhi's people, Ammon had come from Zarahemla, so he knew the way. Alma did not know the way. Verse 25, And after they had been in the wilderness twelve days, they arrived in the land of Zarahemla, and, did, and King Mosiah did also receive them with joy. Uh, so this is uh, showing that uh, in other instances, the... The Nephites were able to figure out a way to escape, but in this case, it shows that uh, the Lamanites or the the Nephites uh, had to rely upon the Lord for their escape from uh, Amulon and his people. I bear testimony that the Lord lives and loves us, and that uh, if we can uh, be patient in our afflictions and be happy in spite of the, in spite of our difficulties, then that's what the Lord wants us to do. And I bear that testimony in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. See you next time. Bye.